Okay, all right, let's kick off um, and hope that some stragglers don't make too much noise as they enter. Um, yeah, welcome. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, this is a, a, a kind of a one-way conversation um, about integrated marketing. Um, it's a term that uh, is increasingly used uh, in, in kind of marketing circles. Um, it has a very specific kind of meaning, I think, for particularly for B2B and, and for technology organizations. Uh, and we're just going to spend um, some time today um, talking about the kind of key principles that underpin integrated marketing, what it means to us at CC Group, what it means to me as a human. Um, we're going to go through some of the methods that we have adopted here to make sure that our thinking is uh, integrated um, and that the delivery of our work for clients um, is true to uh, a kind of integrated principle. Um, we're going to talk about the outcomes as well. So why why it's a thing, why um, in the context of, of the modern kind of technology marketers toolkit, why integrated thinking and integrated marketing is um, is delivering improved results. And we're going to go through some of those results as well. Um, we should have some time at the end for a QA, and a but um, there's a couple of CC group people here. Please keep me honest with timing um, and send me a direct nudge uh, if I'm going uh, to miss out on a QA at the end. So yeah, that. Um, a very quick a little bit about me and, and the quicker the better. Um, but I do have a, a, a kind of accidental broad uh, exposure to all of the kind of key elements of, of the marketing mix um, over my entire kind of 25 year career. I have worked in, in design agencies. Uh, I've worked in uh, innovation and, and new product design agencies. I've worked in qualitative research agencies. Um, I've run social media teams, uh, kind of global social media teams. And I've worked in, um, in several different PR agencies uh, delivering this kind of integrated mindset. And I've been here at CC Group for just under two and a half years. Um, with that very remit, I, I was brought in because um, CC Group had looked at some of the macro trends affecting technology, but also um, wanted to say yes more often to clients, right? Um, and uh, most people uh, here, I, I, I would imagine, are, are kind of know enough about PR and comms to know that um, it isn't a single channel discipline anymore. And um, CC Group and all PR agencies have to broaden and evolve their proposition in order to be able to deliver, continue to deliver good work for clients. Um, and that's been my role here. I've, I've been here two and a half years and we've, we've got a, a, an expanded proposition. We're doing lots and lots of, of multi-channel work. Um, and we're, you know, we're, we're on our integration journey uh, at least. Um, and this is a good place to start, I think. Um, I thought a definition of integrated marketing in, in terms of, it is open to interpretation. Um, but this is ours. Uh, it's a system for marketing communications that delivers a unified experience across all channels. And I'm gonna I'm gonna break that that statement down. You will find different interpretations and different um, definitions of integrated marketing, but the, the consistent thing that you will find across all of it and the the kind of essence of it is um is uh, this sense of unification. Um, and this sense of kind of multiple channels. And we'll go into that in, in, in more detail in a bit, but just to break this kind of, this description down a little bit, this word system is important um, because integrated marketing is, it, at its core is, is a way of, of planning marketing, way of planning um, annual you know, marketing budgets. It's a way of planning campaigns. Uh, we all know, we've all been working, we're all very familiar with the tactical channels that integrated marketing uses, digital, social, PR, influencers, email, PPC, performance. We all know those, you know, integrated marketing isn't a new word for all of those channels. The actual integrated bit is what happens before all the activation on the channels. Um, and so it, it's useful and instructive to think about it as a system. It's a way of working, it's a mindset, um, it's a, uh, a, a cluster of techniques driven that derive from right across the marketing mix, um, and for us as a, as a you know as a, a, a comms professionals, um, we 
interpret integrated marketing. We use integrated marketing for mark, you know, marketing communications here. So the, these are um, specific types of audience external to the business from journalists and um, industry analysts to customers and different types of customer, as well as kind of internal um, uh, uh, employee comms as well. Uh, integrated marketing is a, is a way for us to better engage and better inform and better inspire the um, these kind of core external audiences. Um, and this sense of a unified experience is, re is really important. At its core, um, integrated marketing is a way of avoiding siloed, single channel thinking. Um, and there are lots of reasons why we should avoid that, not least because it's costly to be thinking about the core channels that you use in your marketing mix mix in isolation and i don't just mean in isolation um uh, in terms of activity but still to this day it's it's all too common that a uh, a pr team within with any kind of organization has it, its objectives and its tactics and its planning sit entirely separately from perhaps a ppc team or a seo team or a, um, a, a different part of the kind of digital marketing mix um that is costly there's inconsistencies, which means the customers slip through the gaps. Um, and we're, we're going to go into it in, in a few slides of time into some detail about um, uh, why it's really important for customer marketing and, uh, and the way that customer buying behaviors are changing. But this sense of unification, it's about increasing ROI. It's, a, it's about decreasing the cost of lead um, by not having all of your plans entirely separate for your marketing mix. And bringing together channels into a, 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 a central platform or central content plan, whatever you think about it, but that has multiple assets and multiple derivations and multiple formats that all ladder up to a single vision, experience, and, and a kind of comms principle. Um, and I think that, that last point about, about channel consistency it, is, it, for me, it's the most important thing. It's the thing I think I talk to most um, clients about. This is a, a, a relatively conservative spread of the B2B channel mix. And we've put it across um, one to many, one to few, and um, high intent, so bottom, close to the bottom of the funnel, and then, and then kind of low intent kind of toward the top of the funnel. Um, just looking at this, um, it, it, it already <laughs> inspires, certainly in me, kind of anxiety around uh, the amount of channels there is to play with. And I don't think anyone would argue that these are all essential channels. They're all part of a good B2B marketing plan. Um, and so at a glance, it's clear that consistency, anything that strives to, to provide uh, a, a consistent use, a consistent narrative, a consistent vision and message, um, uh, and a consistent kind of brand experience across all of these, is both important and and, uh, and difficult, but also necessary uh, and, and kind of an ideal way of thinking about marketing. But there's other reasons why integrated marketing is really important. I'm going to spend a couple of minutes now talking about industry context, what's going on um, that, that is impacting the way that, that tech marketers and particularly B2B tech marketers are um, uh, kind of conducting themselves. This is a, a very quick pestle um, analysis of uh, the tech kind of markets in 2024. There is a lot more to this, um, and I will package this up and send it to anyone who wants it with all of the research and all the stats cited and a fuller PESEL um, analysis. It's pretty useful. But um, I've deliberately created this, this slide largely to try and inspire a bit of um, kind of angst and tension. Um, there is a lot uh, of, uh, of these macro trends that are changing the way that tech buyers buy they're changing the way that, te that technology businesses operate and think about themselves and think about their context. And also, therefore, um, any comms professional that is responsible for a, a tech business, the, the, the rules of engagement are different. Um, and uh, we feel at CC Group, and if you saw our rebrand and our relaunch a couple of weeks ago, you, you know, you'll kind of be familiar with the narrative, but this is changing the context within which um, uh, technology marketers have to do more with less um, and not just the proliferation of channels as we saw on the previous channel, but simply the way that the business is conducted. Um, there is another key point to why 
integrated marketing is relevant now and what is, is happening right now that, that, that feels different and um, feels like uh, this kind of unified integrated approach is relevant. And that's the way that um, tech buyers are buying. Um, I, I don't think it's news to anybody uh, here that um, buying behaviors are changing and have been changing for a long time. Um, this data set that we're looking at here is from our annual, uh, one of our annual catalyst reports. We uh, publish four or five um, pieces of, of qualitative, uh, sorry, quantitative uh, empirical research uh, every year into the, uh, a number of different sectors, um, specifically looking at the, the nature of the buying journey. Uh, and these two data sets are, are consistent in all of our research and have been um, uh, for a number of years. The the way that tech buyers or the, the, the touch points that buyers use in order to um, understand more about vendors and in, in order to build enough information to be able to make an informed decision. Look at all of the touch points. Industry analysts are obviously very influential, but as we go down, there are some really important kind of persistent channels here. Events have been important forever, but what we can see here uh, as we go down from um, on both sides, from uh, email marketing and, and kind of media through to web searches, through to digital channels, through to um, uh, webinars and, and direct marketing uh, channels. Um, the numbers here demand attention. It is not a sufficient job to not be looking after and, and not be serving all of these expectations and all of these touch points with original value proposition led content because this is what your buyers are, this is how they're behaving. This is where they expect you to be putting information um, across to them. This is another really important. So this is a personal bugbear of mine. Uh, the, the lack of brand investment um, in B2B tech businesses and the lack of understanding of the role that brand, that brand awareness and brand perception plays in, um, in purchase decision. This again comes from our own empirical research that looked um, at uh, uh, a, a cluster of enterprise technology buyers. So we interviewed 125 enterprise technology buyers, um, specifically about their attitudes to vendor's brand uh, and, and how influential brand, their perceptions of a vendor's brand is in influencing their purchase decision. This is a really important slide. The punchline is brand perception is more influential than product capability fit. And the, the closer you get to final decision, the more influential brand perception is than product fit. Product fit is a door opener. It's a hygiene factor. It's table stakes. It's the perceptions of the organization and the brand which will actually win the day. But this is a really key point here. What we can see is that 50% of all enterprise level buyers either consider brand being the only thing they take into consideration or the main thing. Um, and only 6%, only 6% of the buyers that we spoke to said that they don't really consider brand at all. The reason why I'm talking about brand here for a second is that um, another key component of, of integrated marketing, which we'll go into when we go into the, some of the methods, is an understanding and, uh, and, a, and, a, and planning for brand building um, as well as product marketing. Both of those things have to exist in order for you to be reaching the hearts and minds that you need to be reached and actually converting, using marketing to convert customers. You are not leveraging your commercial asset if you are not um, investing in brand marketing and, and telling as many stories about your um, your organization and, and ethos and culture and precedent and um, individual team members. All of these are, are small components of brand. Um, and integrated marketing does both of those things. It does it markets through the funnel. It, it talks on a brand level and a product level, on a brand awareness level and a and a performance and, and, and lead demand gen level as well. So a final point on, on the kind of why integrated marketing is um, is what this means for us. You know, we have been through a two two year um, uh, kind of evolution and, and we're still on that journey and, and the, the CC groupies here would attest to um, how deliberate this this evolution has been, um, and what this means is that we've had to completely rethink about our proposition, uh, and where we've landed is is a, you know is testament to everybody here, absolutely everybody in terms of the um, 
the input that they've had and, and the way that we're delivering this. But we are now structuring our uh, and thinking about the, the services that we offer in three interlinked areas. Um, we now offer analytical services um, because to be truly integrated, you have to have a foundation of regular um, insight. We'll talk more about the key data sets in a, a moment, but analytics, not just to um, diagnose um, uh, marketing performance, but to, to, to look at uh, and benchmark um, uh, your mental market share and your share of conversation or your share of voice with, with kind of uh, key competitors that provides the foundation for um, channel agnostic kind of idea generation, really. And that's where the strategy comes in. So um, we also offer a range now of, of standalone strategic and planning services from brand strategy through to qualitative research, through to go to market planning. Separating strategy from activation is so important when you are trying to move away from single channel thinking. Um, and what we are really uh, um, kind of getting our teeth into here uh, is having ideas that are entirely detached from a channel. Um, and, and that process of idea generation um, that is agnostic of channel is a really important way of having big, strong, powerful ideas, but also having ideas that can be integrated and work across multiple, multiple channels whilst giving this, you know, reinforcing the same message. And then our activation um, uh, services, our tactical services, that's where um, media relations, analyst relations, so social media influences, you know, the, the, the kind of tactical interpretation and expression of it all. That's probably more typical um, uh, kind of PR agency uh, kind of work, but across analytic strategy, strategy and activation, we are able to, to provide a completely through the line multi-channel um, uh, service to clients, but also we're able to encourage each other to um, uh, to be data driven, to um, to plan and, and have ideas agnostic of channel and then activate across multiple channels. So I'm going to expand um, a little more on, on some of the key methods. I'm not going to give it all away, obviously, but uh, I'm going to give some of it away. Um, how we do this and what, you kind of, uh, what, what that looks like internally. If, when we receive a challenge from a client or we're receiving an RFP or a, um, or a, new, a new kind of brief, um, these are some of the met methods we use to make sure that, that we are being as integrated as we can. Um, <clears throat> probably won't be surprising to anybody to um, uh, to realize that we start with with insight but there are there are kind of specific data sets that we use in order to be able to craft ideas and, mess and messages and narratives um, that are integrated and, and the use of the word playbook in the middle there is is very deliberate but we need and, and in order to be integrated, you need to, to have a, a repository of insight into your organizational principles and proof points. That is how we, we that is where strong brand storytelling comes from. Um, and those two things, principles, um, promises, I guess we can kind of think about principles as promises as well. Your organizational principle is what enables you to make big brand promises uh, to the market and to your target customers in terms of how you are going to solve a need in terms of how you are going to deliver key outcomes or part of good solid mark -ons. Proof points is, is such an important part of um, uh, giving, making promises that are, that are believable and therefore that will, that will engage uh, an, an audience. So the first data set that is absolutely necessary to complete and have as a, as a, as a, a repository, a, a, a searchable repository in your marketing uh, uh, strategy is organizational <clears throat> principles, proof points, and promises. Then um, we need customer needs analysis. It is so important that customer insight is focused on how, what, how customers describe their needs. That's really important. So what the needs are, but really importantly, how those needs are articulated. And I think that is something that, that um, an integrated marketing kind of approach or integrated thinking demands and it's and it's it's just good marketing hygiene not just to, to, to consider basic quant segmentation as customer insight um you need insight into needs how they are how those needs are articulated the words the customers use to describe their needs <clears throat> how they prioritize those needs <clears throat> the outcomes they expect um as a result of investing in a technology like yours or working with a vendor like you 
um, how those outcomes are articulated, common problems in getting needs met, um, uh, ideal preferences, how they would construct the ideal vendor. These are all questions that we ask as part of our qualitative research, <clears throat> but are absolutely crucial in terms of creating um, a, a, a repository of insight that can be used across every channel um, that can be used right the way across the, the the kind of marketing funnel, not just the driving awareness, but actually qualifying awareness and driving advocacy. Um, the more qualitative insight you get into customer needs, the better your marketing would be. And if you don't have customer insight, you're guessing. Uh, and we don't guess. Industry context is another important one. So what we mean by that is everything from um, media analysis, trade media analysis in terms of key topics um, and themes, but also competitor positioning. It's also always useful to see uh, where which needs your competitors are, are clearly positioning against and how they're messaging against those uh, needs. So industry context is a really important point. Um, search behaviors is another part of this as well and, and kind of share a conversation of key topics. Once you've aggregated all of those data sets, <clears throat> you have got everything that you need to ex express your value proposition. You, a value proposition is effectively an articulation of why you are uniquely placed to address the needs of your customers. Um, this, these three data sets are how you create a value prop um, and the content within these, uh, these three data sets will enable you to create messages that are authentic, but ambitious, anchored in a customer reality <clears throat> and focused on uh, your customers rather than yourselves. And that's um, that's a really important part of, of this. Another kind of key principle of integrated marketing is, is to um, is to be customer centric, right? You, rather than product centric, you, you solve a need um, and through the articulation of and through the messaging, you start with customers and kind of end with your own proposition rather than starting with we, 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 we. Excuse me, what that looks like in terms of a of a kind of model or way of working is um is something that is customer centric and channel agnostic that's a phrase that we bandy around here a lot i like it uh customer centric channel agnostic so if we work from the bottom up um if we're thinking about a campaign <laughs> or if we're thinking about a you know a, a longer term uh, um uh, kind of ambition thought leadership perhaps um Integrated marketing encourages us to create a comms platform. Um, and and the, the story of this model is that channels come last. Um, once you've aggregated all of this lovely insight, um, you will have a, a series of themes, you will have a series of superpowers, you will have a series of, of kind of key thought leadership topics that you know that you need to go to market with. With any one of those, as you embark on a, on a, on a campaign, this is an integrated campaign model. You start with that comms platform, which is effectively a promise you want to make to a, a, a maybe a, 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 an audience segment, or um, you want to build a campaign around your value proposition, of re refining your 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 key point of differences. Um, this comms platform informs everything. So it starts with a, with a clear articulation of a customer need, how you're going to how you are uniquely placed to address it, um, and all of the key messages. That you want to go to market with once you have this comms platform and often these these platforms are they're quite um they're quite kind of ambitious in 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 and creative in, um as they're created there's often a, a like a strap line or a key experience principle that kind of binds everything together um and yeah i think anything that encourages creative thinking in, in b2b marketing must be encouraged once we've got that platform articulated then we go uh, and choose our core kind of um, methods of activation. <clears throat> this could be something that is um, very specifically customer centric, which would mean that there are certain formats and assets that were relevant for that. It could be about brand storytelling. Maybe you've got a launch. Maybe you, 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 know, you feel like your brand story is, um, uh, needs, needs to be amplified. That is a type of activation. You can decide uh, once you've got a, a platform on... Um, really important formats for you and i'm sure we've all seen the uh as the stats around the role that the video is playing and, and and how that's a different type of engagement but um if there are key formats that are really important to a particular campaign or particular piece of marketing once you've de developed a commerce platform that's the time to kind of factor that in 
Um, or if it's just classic product marketing, and there's nothing wrong with classic bottom of the funnel product marketing, uh, again, um, that ambition, that activation comes after you've developed a comms platform. Um, and then the content pillars are, are effectively the, 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 the types of um, uh, asset that we're going to be using to tell this story. Um, everything from you know uh, uh, customer testimonials and customer stories through to exec profiling, through to you know, big brand videos, or thought leadership. Um, <clears throat> once you've developed your platform, your activation, your pillars, what you'll have is a is a is a a cluster of narratives, ambitions, stories you want to tell, the formats that you want to use to tell them, and then you you can apply all of that to a channel. And that 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 approach of working from a from kind of platform first and channels last is it means that it's innately integrated. Um, you've got a story, you've got key messages that underpin that story, you've got key assets and formats that all galvanize together, coalesce together to create that story. And only then are you apportioning those formats and those stories to different um, to different channels. It, that is an innately integrated way of working. Aligned to that and aligned to that approach is a, is a, is a, and kind of another inherent principle in integrated marketing is um, knowing which fo asset formats and knowing which metrics to use depending on where you are at in the funnel. Um, a lot of, of, let's take a thought leadership campaign, for instance. Um, if we are, a thought leadership campaign has to work right across the funnel, right? You have to drive awareness of, 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 a, of a piece of thought leadership, a white paper, a report, whatever it is. Um, you need to distribute that through the mid, mid funnel, you need to get downloads, you need to get webinar attendances and all that good stuff. And then you need that thing, that that piece of, of, of thought leadership, that that fundamental functional content expression of who you are and, and why you exist um, needs to drive leads. So a, a good thought leadership campaign needs to work right the way through the funnel. Um, integrated thinking and integrated approaches enable us to know um, in, in, in terms of a campaign, what assets to use at the top of the funnel to promote the thought leadership, what what assets and channels to use mid funnel when we're looking at driving downloads or or, 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 or you know event attendances or, or webinar attendances, um, and then at the bottom of the funnel, what to use in order to retarget people that are engaged with the campaign in order to drive um, leads. Typically, this would be for a um, you know a target trigger page on a website or a CTA page or an onboarding page or a free demo, whatever you know whatever your onboarding process is, um, and knowing that there are different measures, different metrics for each part of that funnel. Um, taking this approach enables us to uh, measure properly, um, but also, you know, kind of in, it's innately um, multi-channel, it's innately um, kind of through through the funnel as it were. And this is this is a really important point um, that kind of speaks to the, the point about brand. This graph is taken from some research that was conducted uh, by the B2B Institute. The B2B Institute is a, a, a LinkedIn uh, kind of think tank, I guess, is, is the way to describe it. Les Binet and Peter Field are marketing effectiveness gurus and legends. They are they are both absolutely um, seminal in uh, creating a uh, the marketing science as we understand it now. Uh, and if you haven't read anything by um, Les and Peter, I uh, strongly encourage you to. Everything they've written is, uh, yeah, is, is, is part of the marketing bible now um, this research which was conducted specifically um uh for the b2b market shows the relationship between brand building and kind of sales uplift um and kind of sales over time um what integrated marketing does because it talks it, it markets at the top and the bottom of the funnel because it it, it talks about brand and it talks about product so product is typically kind of more sales activation type Type of marketing and brand is more um, kind of softer and 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 um, typically kind of upper and upper mid funnel. Um, what we all know is that at any one moment in time, only five percent of our target audience are actually actively in market to buy. Ninety five percent of our audience are not actively in market. So if all you're doing is is, is drilling sales messages, not only are you wasting loads of money, but you're not really engaging your audience. Brand. Uh, operating at both a brand level and a sales activation level, at a brand level and a product level, or doing performance marketing and brand marketing, whatever terminology you want to use, at the same time, um, it, it it enables you to 
speak to the people that are in market, those kind of short term sales, but also actually raise the level of, um, of, uh, of sales enablement over time by, um, by long term brand building. It's kind of marketing best practice and it is absolutely inherent in, um, in a kind of integrated approach. Those are just some of the techniques and methods that we use. Uh, I, I think that integrated marketing is as much a kind of, it's a mindset, I guess. Um, and for a lot of, of our industry and a lot of marketers, that, that key principle of detaching idea generation from channels is in itself quite a kind of um, revolutionary way of thinking. We're, and we, you know, we're still not doing it a hundred times out of a hundred here. Um, we have uh, an entire playbook of, of integrated marketing tactics and, and kind of techniques. Um, so if, uh, if there's any, any, any other specific kind of insight that anyone wants to just let us know in the chat or uh, drop us an email afterwards and we will happily share all, uh, all of the methods that we have. So we're going to look at some of the reasons as, as to why, why, why we're talking about this, why this is even a thing and, and what, what kind of outcomes it delivers. Um, and I've spoken about this a lot, but it's a really important point. The, one of the key reasons to believe, one of the key kind of outcomes from integrated marketing is um, demand generation starts where it should, right? At the top of the funnel. Um, and I think that a lot of us, in, particularly in technology, are, um, are guilty of thinking that demand gen or demand fulfillment is a bottom of the funnel thing and just turning on PPC will do it, will do the job. But actually, um, you have to create the demand at the top of the funnel before you can convert that demand and then fulfill that demand at the bottom. But you cannot generate leads unless you're generating awareness. So what integrated marketing, because it, um, it is both brand and product, because it is a, an expression of a value proposition that is channel agnostic and, and it's about putting customer needs um, first in any kind of messaging and narrative, um, it means that we're able to plan everything um, through the funnel, which means that demand generation starts where it should at the top. And, and what we've been really satisfied with is that we can we can show very clearly the role that, that media relations plays in MQL generation. Uh, this, by the way, this model that we're looking at is a camp is kind of an is a multi-channel campaign model. Um, it's something that we use a lot um, in proposals and in um, you know kind of thought leadership to to clients to show how relatively straightforward it is to. Um, to visualize an integrated campaign. Um, so what we've got here, different icons represent different channels. I hope that's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is actually a, a thought leadership campaign, an integrated campaign for a piece of thought leadership. What we've got here, we can see is trade media. We've got um, LinkedIn. We've got Google PPC. We've got a hero asset on a, on a gated landing page. We've got email. Um, and we've got another round of LinkedIn ads. So we've got um, organic LinkedIn content. We've got um, we've got paid LinkedIn ads, we've got some paid Google display, we've got some um, uh, uh, hero asset, um, and we've got, you know, kind of when, uh, website landing pages and emails. Multi-channel, nice and integrated, doesn't look too difficult. When you, when you visualize it chronolog chronologically, um, and you know, for instance, that uh, a Google display ad is a much better um, ad for uh, driving a, a downloads of a report, um, at the point of launch than it is to deliver, for instance, a, uh, a, a kind of uh, always on brand message. Uh, I think that um, purely because of the kind of numbers that, that most B2B tech businesses are doing a month in terms of unique users, uh, I think more often than not, our advice for PPC is to use it tactically rather than an always on brand thing. Um, none, none of our clients have got any kind of e-commerce e component to their website. Uh, they might have some self-serve kind of sign-up components, but there's no full e-commerce component in, in most B2B websites. So uh, always on brand um, kind of paid ads um, uh, can be a waste of money. And certainly the way that we think about PPC is, is a tactical component to, uh, to drive a specific behavior during a campaign. Um, we use this model a lot. It's very useful to just begin to say, um, straightforward. We've got four channels in this campaign. We've got multiple different assets. This is what it looks like in terms of chronology, um, asset and channel fit for different phases of the funnel and why. The other key outcome of this is consistency of messaging. And we're going to spend a bit of time, I guess, talking about why consistency of messaging is useful. 
but we're going to we just use the same framework uh, that we used before when we spoke about the uh, proliferation of B2B channels. Um, but we're looking at <laughs> both again, one to few, one to many, but product oriented comms and brand oriented comms. And then we've got the kind of different types of assets, different ways that we are we are kind of um, uh, typically expressing these these two different types of comms, brand and product. There, there, there's likely to be some disagreement here. There is no exact way of doing it. Arguably, now I look at this again, PPC can feature both brand and product, for instance. But what we've got here and the and the, the kind of ambition of this slide is again to show that there are lots and lots and lots of different types of assets, different types of um, uh, format um, that is typical for any kind of brand and, and kind of product comms. And, and again, the value of consistency here is um, it should be viewed through the prism of um, saving, cost saving. It is costly to have inconsistent messages in all of the key touch points that you are um, uh, that you're using. It's costly in terms of ROI because if you are not providing a consistent message that is anchored in these core principles of um, uh, promise, proof point, outcome. Um, then you are missing the opportunity to, to win the hearts and minds of customers. You're not converting customers through the funnel. You might be doing a good job of awareness. And I think this is quite common for a lot of businesses is so the top of the funnel awareness is, is quite, is, is doing okay, but it's actually converting those or even being able to understand how, how we move them through the funnel. The way that we move them through the funnel is through different channels, through using all of the touch points that customers expect and using all of these and more types of, um, uh, of comms. Therefore, consistency is how we move people through the funnel. It's how we begin to, to, to approach attribution, particularly in, in the coming days of, of no cookies. Now, I'm not a big fan of, of kind of a single view of the customer. I don't think it's possible for marketing, but we do have to show attribution, and it is an important part of, um, of campaign planning. The more consistent you are, the easier it is to do. And all of this... Is, is, is kind of irrelevant if it didn't drive better results. Um, and here are some of the stats. And like I said, I will put, I will cite all of the, the uh, research in the deck. If anyone wants it, let us know. Um, but these are kind of four really killer ones um, uh, that, that show why multi-channel or integrated campaigns drive better results. Um, you know, we've spoken about changing buying behaviors, but it's, it's massive, right? On average, B2B buyers only spend about 17% of the buying journey actually with vendors, with suppliers. The rest of it is done either entirely on their own or with kind of peers and their own network. Um, and that's only going to increase, right? If, if your buyers are spending the majority of their journey um, and, they're, and, and making up their mind without engaging you at all, you better be providing consistent, compelling, original and authentic messages across every touch point that they expect you to be. Otherwise, you, you know, you're, you're simply going to get shortlisted less often, you're going to win fewer RFPs. 67% of B2B buyers rely on content for research and purchase decisions linked to the fact that they are conducting more of the buying journey in themselves. Again, um, uh, all, everything we're talking about here is, is expressed through content and that model that, that, that I showed a few slides ago um, that places a great deal of emphasis on thinking about asset formats and content formats. It, it's so important. It's as important, at least, as the topic of what you're writing is the format within which that is expressed. Defaulting to white papers isn't always the right thing to do. Sometimes a, a piece of thought leadership can be delivered in animation or a video, depending on behaviors you want to leverage, depending on the nature of the data. All of that stuff, integrated marketing demands that we think about assets and formats um, way before we kind of get to channels. Um, this is a this kind of 90% stat is, a, is um, basically, it's meant to say uh, all the companies that are doing well are using um uh, are using video to do it that's an example that's kind of video is a proxy for multi-channel video is a proxy um of of bringing new asset formats into your planning stages which is a key part of um of integrated thinking and integrated marketing <coughs> video is, is often used as a, as a kind of vanguard or a bit of a kind of proxy for integrated marketing um and you know i think it's under leveraged uh and um, and yet the best, you know, the best tech businesses are, are, are using it well. Um, and this is a key one, right? Um, you, you, you're three times more likely to be to, to, to get the objective you have. You're, 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 you're likely to be three times more effective with a campaign if you run it across multiple channels. 
Um, and um, that, yeah, that shouldn't be surprising, but I will, like I said, cite all of the research. What that means, and this I think is the final slide, and I did intend to finish at quarter two, so that's well done me. Um, all of this adds up to better marketing ROI, and we can think about ROI in two different ways, um, but brand building and performance marketing, marketing of the, you know, through the funnel, brand and product, added to um, messages that are aligned to the, uh, and, and uh, marketing practices that are aligned to the ways that people, are, the, the buyers are buying um, in terms of touch point, in terms of different content assets, greater consistency in your messaging and your narratives and improved performance. All of that ladders up to um, kind of better uh, ROI. This is a stat that, that, that um, has been widely shared and widely used. You may have seen it already, um, but uh, that came from research, some research two years ago that um, integrated campaigns deliver on average 9.5% uh, higher returns than single channel or um, or kind of traditional channel uh, 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 campaigns. It also reduces the cost of lead. Um, <clears throat> that's the other way of thinking about ROI is when you are, when you realize that that you need to think about demand gen at the top of the funnel and that the trade PR is, is just, and media relations has just as much role to play in demand gen as, you know, PPC and, uh, and events. Um, you're you're reducing the cost of lead because you understand that you know the, your cheapest lead always comes in at the top of the funnel always. You know if you're having to buy leads um, straight in at the bottom, that's going to be more expensive. Your cheapest lead always comes from the top of the funnel and works its way through. And, and integrated marketing is the right approach to take in order to keep feeding and nurturing um, prospects through the funnel. Um, forty five, bang on. Uh, we can stop now for some questions. Um, I presume that the best way to do this is through the chat, but I can enable anyone, any individual participant to allow to talk if you wanted to express your question with your voice. But we have a chat option, so by all means, if there are any questions, we will hold on for a few minutes and answer any questions. Okay, all right, I will take that as being exhaustive. Um, thank you very much for uh, spending 46 minutes listening to me waffle on. Um, like I said, uh, I will package this up, include the citations um, and anywhere I've got kind of key stats from uh, and I'll include a bigger pestle um, uh, uh, analysis of the technology industry. If anyone wants anything, um, please do let us know. Oh, we have a question, sorry. Oh, no, that was just a statement. <laughs> Thanks, Stephanie. Um, uh, yeah, let us know and we'll happily send it to you. Thank you very much for your time. Have a lovely day.